welcome to the women's show i am chetunga rebecca juna and this is civic space tv today we talk about the opportunities for trade in the east african region and with the main focus of agenda lens i host the our academy alumni the our academy is an exchange program by the u.s mission to cater for entrepreneurs and those women that are in business welcome to the show ladies thank, thank you, you. How do you feel today? We feel good. You feel good. Mm. So um, the ladies I have are Dorothy and Irene. They are alumni of the OWL Academy and are some of the women that are in business or are, that are entrepreneurs. And we look at the EEC being a regional block. What are those opportunities that we as women can be able to tap into and be able to thrive so that we also improve our standards of living, but also make a meaningful impact in the social economic development of our country. And I want to start with you. What is the OW Academy? Uh, the OW Academy is uh, the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs mm. uh, that has been uh, in Uganda for quite some time and uh, is impacting especially the women in business. Mm. Uh, through a program uh, that is the Dream Builder program that is a structure that is structured, it's online where uh, uh, different women from uh, various regions, that's the Northern region, the Eastern region, Central region and Western region apply to be part of this program. So they do it in uh, a phased approach, which mm -hmm. is cohorts. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally joined in the cohort four and uh, in this program, you receive knowledge. It's an online knowledge-based program that takes you through various sections of managing a business. And at the end of each program, or each uh, module, you answer questions to show your understanding and appreciation of the module you have just completed, but also filling in a business plan. Mm. And also we must acknowledge that a business plan is so critical to business success. So at the end of the program, you should have completed writing up that business plan, then you graduate. And uh, it's not just a program where you graduate with any percentage. There are requirements, there are minimal requirements mm. that you must be able to achieve to be able to graduate from this program. Mm. So in terms of um, the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, it is there to impart knowledge, business knowledge, and prepare you to thrive in the business world, not only for your community, but as well for the nation, and also to be part of the East African community in terms of widening your markets. Mm -hmm. So that's where the program comes in, is that it's enabling women to be socially and economically impactful in the region and also in the country. Thank you so much, Dorothy. And as, as uh, an alumni, what is your speciality in terms of inter entrepreneurship or business? What do you deal in? Uh, as uh, an alumni of the AWI program, I am uh, into agro-processing and uh, I am the managing director of a company called D&M Group International Limited. We are agro-processors of Kim's natural chili sauce. Uh, we do Kim's tomato ketchup though at this point in time it's on hold, mm -hmm. try pending a few issues. And uh, our products are majorly supplied in Uganda. We're in the Eastern region mm -hmm. and uh, we are in the Central region and hoping to spread to the West and to the North. And hopefully the East African community. And definitely yeah. the East African community. Okay. Mm. Uh, one of the things I know as uh, an alumni of the Department of State Exchange Programs is that there is a very big cohort that you'll find that if something is done in Uganda, it's also being done in Kenya mm -hmm. and across the East African region. And that is a whole group of alumni. Mm -hmm. And that's where I will base my question because I know that they are alumni of AWI in Kenya, mm -hmm. they are alumni of AWI in DRC. Mm -hmm. What are the opportunities for trade for women? In the East African region? One, the opportunities for trade as an alumni, and you have just mentioned it, is that to be able to trade, you must establish networks mm. on all levels. Yeah. The fact that there are alumni on the other side 
and we are on this side. It's about being able to establish opportunities that are, say, on the Kenyan market mm -hmm. or on the Tanzanian market. Likewise, mm -hmm. them establishing opportunities that are this side. Mm -hmm. And having gone through the same program, it creates that network where we are able to meet, we are able to discuss, we are able to talk about the different opportunities in the mm -hmm. respective mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. And through those networks, we establish partnerships that can be able to open up doors mm -hmm. of opportunities in the respective regions. But even as a program, this program is a macro program. You get it? Why? Despite the fact that it encompasses women at different levels mm -hmm. of uh, business, what we learn from it is that it is teaching you, it is giving you knowledge to take you to that macro level mm -hmm. of doing business. Mm -hmm. And uh, in such a way, it's preparing you because it's one thing to have the opportunity, it's another to be prepared for that opportunity. Yeah. So what AWI does is to prepare you for those opportunities, give you the necessary mentorship and expose you mm. to the necessary opportunities through these mentorship programs. Mm. Um, opportunities come also with boldness. Yeah. I'll give an example, we attended a, a session and uh, I for I've forgotten this lady's names, but she had an encounter in her early life that affected her physically. But if she was able to go through that encounter to become who she is today, mm -hmm. you, why can't you get inspired from what she has become mm -hmm. to have that determination to know that through this AWI program, mm -hmm. I can use the opportunities within the program to advance my business to the next level mm -hmm. because there's nothing you cannot do in business. But it's that determination, it's that inspiration that AWI continues to give because even after this program, we continue to gather, we continue mm. to network, we continue to be exposed to opportunities, funding opportunities, grants are opportunities that we as women can tap into to make sure we get to that point. Because we are living in a time where the world and necessary authorities mm. are supporting women. Mm. You get it? And we must be part of these programs mm. to tap into those opportunities and how is one of those programs that if you joined, there are numerous funding opportunities to tap into that can help you grow your business to be able to become regional. Okay, mm. thank you so much. Um, Irene, um, I will come to you and ask you, and before even we go to the challenges, are women able to tap into these opportunities that we are talking about? Because the budget talked about digital, uh, digital transformation for access to markets. What available, um, because I know you're into trade, what available um, online markets that are there within the East African region? And then after you know, giving us just a feel of, about that, then you give us the challenges. Well, uh, we've, uh, thank you so much. We've talked about, she has talked about the opportunities. Mm. But uh, as she has said, the opportunities are out there, mm -hmm. but they will not look for us. Yeah. We have to look for those opportunities. And being part of uh, different platforms mm -hmm. uh, can help us get to tap into those opportunities because um, on our WhatsApp group that brings together women in trade mm -hmm. and business, and every opportunity that comes in, they share it on the group. Then also, I've also been part of the, there is something called Soko Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, under the umbrella of Bubu, by Uganda Build Uganda. Mm -hmm. Because before we start thinking outside Uganda, I believe we have to first look at the market we have. Mm -hmm. And also another thing uh, is getting export ready. It's mm -hmm. not that easy. But we start from here and then we expand. Because when you look at it, if you're to export, you don't export the the excess that you have, mm -hmm. but you have to be ready that you have to supply here mm -hmm. and then also to supply out, not just the excess. Because if you look at the excess that you have and you're exporting that, it means at a certain point you will not sustain the market. You will not sustain your exportation. Mm -hmm. You will find, you reach a point where you cannot meet the market demand. Yeah. And that's where export readiness comes in. I don't know whether uh, you've heard about the 
African continental free trade area. Oh, yes, I have. And I think that is coming in to help us mm. uh, because I've attended a program where they were explaining to us, helping us to get ready mm. uh, to export. And uh, <clears throat> when you look at it, women have a uh, uh, big opportunity because mm. I think most of the international organizations mm. are looking out for women, even our own, on our own government. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, it's looking out for women. And uh, the opportunities are there, but then we have challenges. Mm. We have challenges. And uh, me, in my sector, I do the crafts, uh, crocheting and loom knitting. But we have a challenge of uh, threads, the material, the mm. quality that we have on market is not that good mm. and you look at it even the quality that we have uh, is not produced here in Uganda it is imported from Kenya mm. and of course by the time it reaches here you find the good quality that is there is expensive mm. and you can only look out for the outside market because when you look at the market here in Uganda people are not willing to buy Mm -hmm. at the amount of course so that means that the cost of production is high and you find that you may be making losses mm -hmm. so uh we've decided we've started actually looking outside uganda before we even uh supply the market yes. that we have here because there's also a challenge of people not valuing uh products made in uganda mm -hmm. And that is a very big challenge that I think maybe, of course, uh, the Build Uganda, Buy Uganda mm. movement, that one has come in to help, but I think a lot more needs to be done mm. so that we get to love what we do, we get to value what we do before we even look outside. Mm. Yes. Thank you so much. You've talked about the fact that you cannot sustain the market out there. And I'll come to the issue of compliance. And and we have seen everybody say, you be compliant, you be compliant. What is hindering um, traders or women traders to ensure that they are compliant with the standards, but also with the procedures? You find we have smugglers all the time uh, that are women, and they decide if you're seeing you're crossing the Busia border, you're crossing the Malaba border, you are, it has said, smugglers have become smugglers. Somebody puts in their box and doesn't want to pay taxes. What is stopping women, especially in cross-border trade, in ensuring that they are compliant with the standards that they are giving out, but also with the procedures? Now, when you talk about compliance, uh, that's where we come in to thank the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Because uh, myself, I also had that fear, you know, of formalizing your business, mm -hmm. making sure you do that things the right way mm. but when i went through the course i realized that you know for your business to really thrive you have to do the right thing mm. your company has to be registered you have to pay the taxes and uh, i think most people run away because they don't know i think mm. it is also ignorance mm. because when someone tells you that maybe if your business is not uh, making profits then you don't pay the tax because you pay mm. tax after, you know, uh, on the profits that you make. Mm. But we don't know. So people run away from what they actually don't know. Mm. So I think there has to be a um, sensitization of the public mm. and uh, maybe a lot of campaigns so that people get to know, mm. get to learn, and they know what to do. Mm. And uh, they will appreciate it, I mm. believe. Okay. Are there issues around transportation that you face, maybe cost being high, delayed, you know? What would you say about that? Now, the challenge, like I told you, for us, uh, we face a challenge of good quality. Mm. And you find we have to ship, uh, like previously, we've been shipping from South Africa. Wow. So we had a client in South Africa so we make the ponchos and then we send them the send shipping them part yes so you can South imagine Africa. yes you can because the quality of thread we had here did not meet the, standard. the standards the other side so it became expensive mm. it became expensive for us 
and we had to put it on hold painfully mm. uh, because there's potential market. Uh, the client really loved what we were doing. She had the market there, but then because of that cost, shipping the thread in, then you know, have to ship in back the ponchos, it became expensive. Mm. Mm. So I think if if uh, if I'm to ask mm. the government is to help us look into the quality of things that they bring in because mm. even if we are producing for Ugandans, we need to look at the quality mm. because for us we do, let's say you're doing the baby, baby blankets, they need to be soft. Mm. But when you go downtown, you cannot get that kind of mm. uh, thread that you're looking for. So you end up using what is available, which makes us produce substandard uh, products. Which ends up hindering the market. Exactly, because it is affecting the market. Mm. Now the South African market, we cannot unless mm. we get the, the threads here. Okay. So that is on hold already. All right, Dorothy, I'll come back to you. We talk about access to market. How best can we ensure that women access digital markets? You know, because she's talking about <coughs> shipping all the time, you're there running. You find women in Chikubo running with their things. Mm. Cha and deka, you know, the, the, the container came. Mm. But how can she sit on her laptop or on her phone? and say, I'm going to access market in Kenya, mm -hmm. I'm going to access market in Tanzania. There is market in Djibouti, as you mm -hmm. well know. It's a new hub that must open. How do we ensure that now women can be able to use their phone to do that, despite mm -hmm. the challenges that surround the digital market? Uh, one, <coughs> one of the ways that uh, we can do that is uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. They say that knowledge is power. And uh, one of the things that has to be continuously, I'll not say that it's not there, mm. but continuously strengthened mm. is ensuring that the women in business mm. receive this knowledge mm. that will give them the level of comfort mm. to transact online. Mm. And when I talk about the women in business, I'm not only talking about the educated, because mm. there are so many at different levels mm that must have this knowledge, must be able to have these gadgets to be able to have online transactions. Mm. So knowledge is key. Like uh, right now, there is a, a hub, innovation hub mm. called uh, Hive Collab. Mm. Hive Collab has just released the digital literacy toolkit. And the digital literacy toolkit is a kit that helps women and men, this for all, mm. to acquire knowledge, starting with your gadgets. Mm. The knowledge of uh, having a smartphone, mm. because to be able to trade online, you must have a smartphone. smartphone. You must be able to know how to utilize that mm. phone mm. to make money out of it. Mm. So that toolkit basically talks about empowerment mm. in the digital era. So one, we must create that level of knowledge mm. to the women but also ensure that we uh, target, like I've said, you may be talking about Dorothy. Dorothy may be able to do it. But what about that lady doing peanut butter who did not go to school? What about that lady trying to do honey? Mm -hmm. Because in their village, there's a lot of honey. Mm -hmm. They did not go to school. One of those things should be about partnerships. Because we cannot run away from advancing in the 21st century mm -hmm. without talking about partnership, partnerships. Mm -hmm. The respective partners must be able to put up strategies that will enable, that, that will enable the women in business mm -hmm. have these benefits. Like there's a lot of grant funding going on. How about mm -hmm. funding someone to have a smartphone? And after giving them that smartphone, you train them through how to use that smartphone for mm. business. I'll give an example. Our program has a program that runs for six months. Mm. For a woman doing that who is not highly educated, it would probably require six months for her to be very comfortable. Mm. And once she realizes the comfort in online transactions, then she'll be able to transact, mm. that it may not be across regions, mm. but even it can be within the same, mm. the same country that she's able to do it online. Why? Because if you look at URSB, if you look at UNBS, mm. if you look at URA, it's purely online. Mm. 
Yeah. You cannot think about transacting regionally when you cannot do it locally. Mm. You get it? So they, this issue of online trading and online transaction starts from home. Mm. Why? Because all government institutions that are supporting the women in business are now online. Yeah. You're not going to go anywhere on our traditional ways of doing things. So sensitizing these women is key mm. to having us online. Another online transaction today, you cannot talk about online transactions without talking about social media. Because online transaction relates to promoting or marketing or advertising your product mm. on a social media platform. platform because you are looking for online customers. Mm. And all that comes to being aware, which are the platforms that I should be able to promote on? Mm. And how do I promote on the respective platforms? Who are my clientele? So you must have an appreciation of the kind of platforms you want, what kind of possible consumers are on that platform, such that you can tailor your promotions to suit the respective platforms. Because mm. what works for Twitter may not work for LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. And what works for Facebook will certainly not work for mm. LinkedIn. So there must be that appreciation mm. of an understanding of the online market. Because today you can trade from your desk. You do not have to move away from your desk. You can make all the clearances on your desk without moving away from your desk. But the issue is how knowledgeable are the women in business to make sure that they are comfortably doing that. Mm -hmm. And that comes down to continuous knowledge, strengthening all the knowledge, and having support systems that allow a significant number of women to do mm. that. Because if you do it only in Kampala, you're not achieving anything. Yeah. What you want to uplift, especially in this era of poverty eradication and uplifting all, zero poverty, it means that you have to penetrate beyond the urban, beyond the literate, mm. and make sure that the illiterate are also made literate mm. to be able to be inclusive mm. in the 21st mm. century. Mm. Thank you so much. You brought very critical points. And the fact that you're in agribusiness, oh, mm. I, I, I know that these days we do not just produce without, you know, the president said, Chida Choka. We need to produce for export. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the market areas, I believe, um, we have is South Sudan, Sudan, mm -hmm. and Djibouti. This is our food. Mm -hmm. Uganda, we have very good, good food. Mm -hmm. But you'll find that a woman is producing, let's say, tomatoes or fruits and all that. But they get spoiled along the way. Mm -hmm. How do we advocate for cold storage um, vehicles without them being prioritized? But rather, maybe you can have them go that government level. Those are very expensive. Mm -hmm. So that by the time it reaches the other side, the woman has not lost money, mm -hmm. but also she has not lost her produce. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you get it, let's say from, from Rampara, and you take it through Masaka, and then it goes through up to there. And these days, they're no longer going, I think, through our normal road. Mm -hmm. How do we, what do we say maybe to government or to the people in the private sector that are in charge of those cold, you know, storage room cars? They're very always big like this as women. Or do we just make the juice and export the juice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to look at it from two different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look at it uh, from a time at which we are addressing where Uganda mm. wants to be. Mm. When we talk about the coolers, mm. coolers are critical you, from the farm, mm. even to the production facility locally, mm. and even for exports. Mm. You cannot transport fresh products without coolers. Mm. And in terms of supplying what is fresh, it would be a priority. It needs to be a priority that uh, the government on, uh, and all other supporting uh, mm. partners mm. need to look at. And this can be done from a community-based angle because you may not do it for one person, mm. you may not do it for one farm, but you can do it from a community-based where there are community leaders that come in mm. 
mm. to be able to manage where all farmers come to ensure that their products are transported. Mm. There it can be sustainable in terms of maintenance, in terms of making sure that they get delivered, mm. in terms of uh, so many aspects. But also I'm going to look at it from the level where Uganda needs to be. 70% we are agro. Mm. We are an agro economy by 70%. And that means you can imagine to what extent our farmers' outputs are. Mm. And for us to guarantee the sustainability of farmers' outputs, we must industrialize. Mm. How do we industrialize? From the farm to the industry. And that's where we agro-processors come in. That if you want something that is sustainable, you must process it such that it can stay longer on the shelf or wherever it is going. Mm for it not to get spoiled. You may succeed at taking fresh tomatoes from the farm, mm. say to Sudan, but the distribution channels, wherever they must go, and the consumption duration, mm. you cannot eliminate wastage. Mm. Regardless, at some point you cannot eliminate wastage. But the only way to eliminate wastage is if we are part of this industrialization drive, where we are saying, you know what, let us agro-process farm output to eliminate wastage. And agro-processing means that if I have my fresh chili and it comes from the farm, inside three days I've processed it mm -hmm. and I have I am able to keep it on the shelf for as near to eight months mm -hmm. and others for as near to two years. There you're eliminating wastage. You have a guarantee that by the end of that period, the consumption has been done. Mm -hmm. The economy is not, the government is not losing money why you're receiving your money and you're paying tax. The person in a business is not losing money mm. through wastage or delayed products. And even then what happens when these vehicles break down? You could be going on your way to Soroti mm. or maybe you're going to Sudan and it gets a problem that affects the refrigeration mm. and things are wasted. So I think the solution to that is really coming down and being part of this industrialization drive. Uganda needs to industrialize. It needs to prioritize the agro-processing industry to make sure that we are able to address the 70% of agriculture output from the farm. Thank you so much. Um, we'll go for a short commercial break and we'll be back. Stay tuned and just keep it there. Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten, and a right for protection of minors, among others. The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. Welcome back from the show, Chetungara Rebecca Juna, and we are joined by Lillian. Lillian is also a member of the AOI alumni um, team, but she is also a woman in business and she has a lot to tell you about opportunities for trade in the ESC. Welcome to the show, Lillian. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Mm. Yes, my name is Lillian Aero Olok. I'm an entrepreneur and I've been doing entrepreneurship for about 13 years now. Wow. Yes, and my major is so much into export with Namugongo Good Samaritan Organization where we uh, export shea butter and um, we export shea butter in East African region and also mm. in Southern part of Africa. Yes, so we also have art and crafts and we participate so much into the uh, cross-border Jua Kali trade. Mm. 
Um, so, yeah, we also have a restaurant business, mm. which is not so exporting. It's local. Yeah. And we are excited about it. Thank you so much, Lillian. And Lillian, you've been doing this for a very long time. What are the opportunities for a woman out there that wants to venture? Um, what opportunities can you identify for them? Um, so the East African region is big mm. and there are so many opportunities out there for uh, all the women to export, ranging from your uh, tomatoes to the grains, which most people call mm. uh, the big boys uh, puzzle game. Mm. But then as a woman, as long as you have it, you can always export. Mm. So those opportunities are there. You can even export your own services. Those opportunities are there. Mm. Yeah. Wow. You talk about services, and that's something we had not yet ventured in. Mm. However, as a woman, what are some of those challenges you have encountered exporting within the East African region? Um, so the uh, challenges that we have encountered mm. exporting within the East African region is looking down on you as a woman. Mm. One, they consider you like you're not knowledgeable mm. enough mm. and you don't have like um, the aggressiveness of the, the men. Mm. So they take mm. advantage of that and then they're kind of exploiting. Mm. Um, considering, let me give an example, I always use buses to export uh, to transport my products to mm. Tanzania or Rwanda. Now during um, the lockdown, mm. the buses were not moving, so yeah. we had yeah. trucks. Yeah. So I used one of the trucks to export uh, to send a bucket mm. of twenty kgs to Rwanda. Mm. It never arrived until now. Yeah. So you call the guys and they're like, um. Who are you again? Um, what did you say? So, yeah. you know, they, they kind of intimidate you and yeah. then they throw you to somebody else and then they're throwing you to somebody else. And, you know, until now, I was given a receipt. I sent the receipt of the bus to my client in Rwanda and my client went because she was also a woman. She went to the bus um, station and they told her, you know what, we, we've never received this kind of thing. So we don't know. You can go back and tell... Um, the person who sent the bucket to follow up from Uganda. So they kind of like play you around, yeah, which is yeah. totally different from the men. Mm, yes. Mm. So I think they take that advantage of us because we sometimes not that aggressive mm. to push, to go through, to, you know, like be on their case until mm. you get it mm. to the to the last bit. So they know very well, oh, this one is going to be distracted by the family mm. and then they'll maybe give up or something like that. So, yeah, yeah it's it has been one of our biggest challenges. And it's unfortunate because it affects business, it affects exactly. trust R on the trust other Trust, relationships and, you know, everything. And so. for a woman to get on the bus and follow the items up to where they get there. And, you can't. And, you can't. And so. I believe that's one of the things that hinders online, you know, markets. Because now if you're sending on the bus and it's not getting there. Yeah. And people have it actually and take it. How about when you just use online and then the next thing the app is off or there is Thank no you. internet. Yeah. 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 But that being said, what have been the beautiful things you've gotten out of that? Oh, the beautiful things I've gotten out of it is um, the relationships, mm. the opportunities. And um, when I say the relationship is we share knowledge, mm. we share ideas, mm. we share opportunities. Mm. Um because my clients in Rwanda, in Kenya, in Malawi, they'll always tell me, oh, there is this opportunity. You know, they link, link you up with mm. other buyers. Mm. And they tell you, oh, I buy my products from so-and-so. So they give you the number and then they communicate back to you. So mm. in that way, you grow mm. your network, you grow your opportunities, you grow yourselves. Mm. So, yeah. Do you believe there has been enough awareness creation around these opportunities, especially with the media? With the media, mm. no. Mm. But uh, organizations have really tried. Mm. The challenge we have with organizations is we only invite our own. Mm. 
okay we only invite our own so when you invite your own and sometimes some of us women are in a number of different organizations mm. you find that the same 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 kind of people mm. who are attending these Event, um, awareness yeah. and uh, trainings and all that mm. so it becomes a challenge for these other women who do not have this opportunity mm. to be into those organizations so with the media um, not so much and, and that's why I'll ask you how best can we involve the media to ensure that there's awareness creation around opportunities for trade for women in the ESC region so with the media, um, the idea that I have been having mm. is we have the mobile phones. Mm. Mm. Even if they are like um, the button phones, because mm. most of the women right now who are into trade, even the women that I work with in crafts mm. actually have smartphones now. It might be cheap, but it can, can receive uh, messages it's mm. on whatsapp at least if we could use those opportunities and send out like um just a small clip of a video mm. of telling them about and then it goes viral mm. and then maybe send a message um, messages just every after maybe two days reminding them because you know people will always react so much to something that is bombarding them, yeah. something that they keep on seeing yeah. back and forth, and then they'll sit back and like, okay, what is this exactly? Mm. So they will pick interest from there. So messages, WhatsApp, because almost every Ugandan mm. who has a smartphone has WhatsApp. Um, TikTok. Oh, yeah. e everyone is on TikTok yeah. now. <laughs> yes, even my little boy has <laughs> talks about tiktok yeah. and you wonder now what a seven year old is doing with uh, tiktok you know so those small videos and yeah. then yeah instagram people are always following up mm -hmm. and seeing what is going on what is trending so yeah thank you so much Lillian. i saw the traders on instagram from tanzania mm -hmm. they there's a way they highlight we have a branch here, we have a branch here, we have a branch here. Yeah. Even when I think they are, they are not real branches, but I think they, the women put them into another person's house and then they model around. Yeah. Have you tried having those informal branches in other places while exporting your, your Juakali things? Um, no, but we have uh, the Juakali different groups. Mm. So we have the Juakali Farmers Group. Mm. We have the Juakali Art and Crafts Group. Then we have the Juakali, you know, they break off from the main mm. forum of the um, East African mm. Common Market. Mm. So they break into those small, small groups. Mm. Okay, and within those small groups, they're always asking, there's Tanzania, there's Rwanda, there mm. is... Uh, um, um, Burundi, then there is Kenya, mm. Uganda is also inclusive. I see also some of the Sudanese are also participating, mm. those ones who are mm. in there. So you find that they share opportunities mm. on those forums. Oh, how can I do this? Oh, how can I do this? And then um, we also know now from those uh, WhatsApp groups about the different uh, chapters mm. that are along the border posts that can help the women to solve some of the issues of crossing the border if you're mm -hmm. doing your export. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Um, I, I want us to come to the issue of compliance. How mm -hmm. do we ensure that women are compliant with the procedures and standards and, you know, for you know being able to trade? Because, you know, if you're asking a woman to have a team, yet she has her few tomatoes and she just wants to cross to, to Busi and sell them, and then you hold her. How best can we ensure that also government understands women? And I also will give it to you on in that angle. How best we can ensure that government understands women's things? Eh? Mm. Yeah. Um. So, for us to be very compliant, mm. there are two things. One, as a woman who is in business and you want to do a cross border trading mm. what is your goal mm. is your goal exporting the bucket basket of tomatoes which mm. weigh maybe about 20 kilos mm. for four or five years down the road or you want to start with the basket mm. of 20 kilos 
and then tomorrow you're exporting three baskets, the next week you're exporting five baskets. Mm -hmm. Now, the more the quantities grow, you will definitely have to be compliant. And there, the government has, I, I don't know how I really have to put it out for the government mm -hmm. to really come in, because URA is very good. Mm -hmm. URA has, I, I should say, they have streamlined most of the things. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the export uh, certificates, mm -hmm. they are still, I'm even still struggling with that. Because one time I walked into um, a URA booth and I asked them, why don't you make it um, friendly? Mm -hmm. Like I can use it on my phone to um, print out my um, ex uh, certificate of origin mm -hmm. and then I can cross the border. What I have to do is I have to download the Ascudas. Not every woman has a laptop. Mm -hmm. Not every woman can afford the data that Ascudas mm -hmm. needs to hold all the information. Not every woman has been trained in having a purchase invoice, um, commercial invoice, a packaging list, you know, those some of those mm -hmm. documents that mm -hmm. are really required for you to attach onto the um, Ascudas so that it can generate for you the certificate of origin. So that system alone is letting the women down. Mm -hmm. We are using agents. And I'm exporting, just let me give an example of just one bucket. Mm -hmm. I need the certificate. Why would I spend my 600,000, go to a, an agent, mm -hmm. I'm selling the bucket at 600, and the agent is ask, asking me for half of that price. Mm -hmm. Am I benefiting? Am no, I in business? Not. I'm going to be out of business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to make it really, really user friendly. friendly yeah. Okay, really user friendly that I can use it on my smartphone, mm. print out that document because now, right now, you have to upload the documents and then after uploading and then go and print it out and then it's a back and forth process. We really want to get the teams. We really want to contribute to our country because we know our taxes is what makes our country better. Mm. If we don't contribute to the taxes, then we do not have mm. the uh, services that we need from the mm. government. Mm. However, the government also has to simpl uh, simplify mm. that uh, system for us, mm. the women, to be able to to trade yeah yes thank you so much i'm coming back to you great ladies how best can government understand women in trading the east african region and and you know give them their needs eh? mm -hmm. because you know the needs that women have how best can we have our government you know address our needs for women in trading the east african region and well um I think uh, for the government to address the needs, first of all, they have to know the needs of the people. What mm. do women need to thrive? Mm. And they can only get that information from the women. Mm. So I think they need to do some research mm. and also focus on the grassroots uh, women. Mm. Because like she said, the information is there, mm. but it is in small circles. Mm. It keeps rotating in those mm. small circles. Mm. So I think the government should go an extra mile to make sure they go to those grassroots women, like the way she was saying, those ones who want to export that bucket. Mm. I, I, I'm on the border. I want to cross with my bucket of tomatoes. Mm. But I don't know even what I'm supposed to do. Mm. And you know, when the government comes in or URA and you know they get hold of these things, this woman is going to feel disappointed mm. because she doesn't know. Mm. She's ignorant about uh, what she's supposed to be mm. doing. So I think sensitization is key. Mm. And uh, they will comply, yeah. I believe, yeah. that as long as they know what they need to do mm. and as long as the government also knows what they really, the, the women want yeah. from them. Yeah. Yes. Okay, come to you. <coughs> you can repeat it again. What, how do we, okay, what, how do we ensure that the government understands women in trade in the East African region and address our needs or your needs? Because for me, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> uh, One of the ways yeah. that uh, we can make sure that the government understands mm. the women in business 
is one, the associations in which we are. Mm -hmm. We cannot advance without having a partnership mm -hmm. or being part of an association. Mm -hmm. And one of those things is evident. Mm -hmm. We are three different women here doing three different things, but what unites us is the AWI, mm -hmm. the Academy for Women mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, being part of those programs at different cohorts still unites us, that it does mm. not matter in which cohort you joined, yeah. but bottom line, you become an alumni mm. and you all network. Mm. There are also other associations. Mm. There is the You Will, you've heard of it. Yes. There is the USEA, mm. Uganda Small, Small Scale, Scale Industries Association. We have the Uganda Chamber of Commerce. Mm. If women must be understood by government, mm. we must have one voice. We must channel our concerns through that one voice. Mm. And that voice is a representative for the women mm. at a national level or even at a regional level. So those are one of the ways we can be able to be understood. Mm. Another way that we must be able to be understood is that even as women, we must unite for a cause that advances our agendas. Mm. It's one thing to hit the drums, and it's another to expect them to hit mm. it for you, mm. but when you're actually not hitting the drum. When government comes on ground, who are these people that are sending out a unified voice? Mm. What are they doing? Mm. Do they have that force to drive their agenda? Mm. Are they driving their agenda? Mm. What is the social economic impact of the activities of the women to this nation? Or even though we haven't reached that point of impacting, mm. maybe in the next five, six, seven years, mm. what is the impact that we are going to have. Mm. So it comes down to individual responsibility. Mm. We go through programs. And one of the day, ways to determine impact, business plans. Mm. Many of us have businesses to which, ca which cannot speak for themselves. Mm. We have become storytellers of our own businesses without necessarily letting the businesses speak for themselves. So we must be determined as women, independent women, for these associations to trust in us, mm. to address our issues. And thereafter, they can present them to the authorities mm. to, to have them address. So the clear example is UNBS. On an individual level, it may maybe take you time mm. to journey through mm. all the certifications. But once, you, but once you join an association mm. or a group or a partnership, that's mm. advancing the cause of certification. Mm. You'll find that where you would have certified as one entity, mm. several entities are certifying within the same period of time. Mm. So I think that is critical for advancing these agendas. But also as women, accountability is key. Mm. You cannot advance where there's no accountability. Accountability for those we entrust with the voice mm. and our own accountability. So these are a mutual. You know, gone are the days where we lived in an environment where women are purely dependent and thriving on the others, mm. advancing their cause. But with the level of awareness, with the level of social media exposure and everything, many of these partnering entities have been found themselves to a level where they're accountable mm. to those they serve to make sure that what our demands are met. What else? There are so many meetings that take place today. Mm. And this one will be as clear as black and white. I was in us when I had begun my journey of entrepreneurship, I would join associations mm. and they would only talk about. You know, I, I always call it micro. Mm. You know, you engage in micro discussions. Mm. Discussions that are taking you nowhere. Mm. They tell you form what are clusters. Yeah. Mm. You attend the same cluster for six months. Mm. No change. You get it? Then one day I was blessed to be part of, um, to be invited by, this time it was called Siatini. Oh, yes. Mm. yes Siatini. I do know it. Mm. And when I went to Siatini, that's when I realized that the, wom the women in business are not alone. Mm. There are people advancing the cause of the women in 
business. Mm. They are driving our agendas. Mm. So that took me from a micro level to a macro way mm. of thinking. Mm. And as women, we should not always stay down. Mm. Mm. Don't let people fight for you when you're not fighting for yourself. We attend workshops, we go for trainings. You are in the cohort, are, are we? Mm -hmm. The cohorts. They ask you a question. You finish session one, session two, session three. A woman in business. You have not contributed to the discussion. <laughs> you come in and go every week. Yes. You get it? Eh? You are not your own voice. Mm. The question is, how are you advancing your business's interest to the mm. world? If you can even be in a small group, mm. you join day one, week two, week three, week four, you walk out. You get it? So when you get, business, business is for the bold. When you get into that kind of space, you must dress with the level of boldness mm. to speak. Mm. When you speak, people identify you. People will know you. People will invite you. And there you are advancing your interest. Mm. Mm. I was a member of the National Reference Group through Siatini. Wow. And I attended eight sessions advancing the interests of the agro-industry agriculture. Mm. How did I get there? I have learned to speak when I've given an, when I'm given an opportunity to be present somewhere. So as women, we should get out of that space, timidness, mm. fear, lack of confidence. You know, these are some of the things that are going to drive us ahead. Mm. But the moment you stay in that space mm. of intimidation, of fear, of cowardness, you will not grow. Mm. And these are deliberate decisions that women have to make. Mm. I've been listening to my fellow alumni here. Mm. And you know, when you see people speak, you tell me, even yourself, yeah. if you won't invite them for an opportunity somehow, somewhere, if they must speak about alumni. You'd say there's somebody I know there. Uh -huh. there. <laughs> so those are some of the yeah. things that have to be done if we need the government on the national level mm. and as well on a regional level mm. to advance the interests of the women in trade. In trade. Wow, thank you so much. I feel energized because now it, <laughs> it means that we also have somewhere we need to reflect as women mm, yeah. and do some work within ourselves and say, okay, this is where we are going wrong. Yeah. And this is where we need to improve. Because I, I, I had one time the Deputy Chief Justice say, that if you do not fight for your rights, where do you think they'll come from? Thank no, you. Where? I, it it mm. means that we need to speak up, as you said. Mm. We need to say what we need. And this is what we are doing just right here. Mm. To say this is what we need, this is what we want, this is what... And reminding people that this is, this is we who we are. Mm. And one of the things I'm so grateful for is that we are in an alumni. You're in mm. business, I am in... International Visitors Leadership Program, there is that side, and every time I see people, I feel envious. <laughs> <laughs> because you have a bigger cohort, and you're all together, together with the Mandela Washington Fellows. You're mm. all, there is like a, a sisterhood and brotherhood that you have. For us, it's you stand alone mm. and you know, challenge the status quo. Mm. But one of the things I wanted us to talk about lastly is access to financing. I was with some women, I brought them from Shema to come to Kampala and see. I don't know if you've seen Volcano Coffee, it's mm. also an alumni, mm -hmm. and to see what it means to have an export of coffee and how they're planting their coffee, and he was telling them what to do. And one of the women said, Ah, the Twina Center, we don't have money. How do we address the challenge to access for financing? Because now the issue with, with banks, women are fleeing the banks. They are going to, to this friend, you borrow me, I said you, my goats, my one. Mm. How, do we, how do we speak maybe to the banks to, to hear the women's voice? And I will start with you, Lillian. Because as a woman that is in trade, there are those days where their money is not there. That's or true. where somebody has not yet paid. Yeah. How do we speak to the bank and say, hey, these are our needs as women? Um... Banks have been spoken to. Mm. I, I will not talk uh, for the banks, mm. but at least there are some that have what we call the women yes. windows. Okay. However, there is still a challenge. Which bank in particular has a women's window? 
Uh, we have Centenary Bank. Okay. It has the women in, in business. No, women in businesses for DFCU. DFCU. And then we have um, the one for Stanbic Bank mm. also. Let, Stanbic let, for her. Stanbic like for her, her yes. Yeah. Stanbic for her. And then also Centenary mm. has the the women um, Centenary Centenary Women something. Yeah. Yes. However, they also have challenges. Mm. I've I've tried to borrow and mm. I was successful borrowing from one of them. Mm. I will not mention the bank, but their interest rate was 40%. Yes. For a woman. Yes. And do you know how they tricked me into getting um, the, after ev we processed everything and each time I kept on asking for the interest rate, they were like, oh, it's friendly, it's affordable. It, yes. Mm. Then I was like, I need this money. Like, I, I badly need this money. And yeah. I really was in Kayas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, when I was signing the last, last papers, we've done all the processes, I see it's 40%. And I'm, I, I died. And I'm like, you know what? I shouldn't have done this because I pushed for it from day one when I went Many to times. meet this. Yes. And I'm like, I want to know the interest rate. I want to know the And the information was the zero. They were kind of, you know, silencing it. Oh, no, it's friendly. Oh, it's fine. It's going to be okay. It's, it's affordable. And last minute, I see it's 40%. I'm like, you know what? I need the money and I need to do this as soon as possible. Let me just sacrifice myself. But this will be the first time. And it was the first time for me to borrow a loan from a bank. Mm. And it's the last time I promised myself to go back to a bank. So what um, we women are doing right now, mm. like the AWI, yeah. we have our circle. And I'm happy to say, yes, I'm uh -huh. happy to say that I'm, I'm on the committee. Wow. Yes. And we are driving it insane. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we want each and every woman at least to get an affordable mm -hmm. loan to boost up their business. Mm -hmm. Because that is what is killing us. That is um, countries like the U.S., countries like... Um, UK, countries like India, you know, Asia, they give their people almost like 0% interest mm. for their loans to boost up their businesses. Mm. And I know, I understand, banks are also into business. Yeah. But look at, it is about the games of the numbers. Yeah. Look at it in this way. How about if we reduce the interest rate? Mm. And then we have more people borrowing and more people able to pay back because it is affordable and they can borrow, you know. They will borrow and say, oh, okay, I've not lost completely my profits mm. to this. But then you're going to borrow and your business is sinking because of the economic uh, situations right mm. now. Mm. And then you have the banks that are coming after you and then you develop all this um, stress issues that come around with anxieties mm. and all that, you know? So what will happen? The business will definitely die off. Mm. Mm. And will the government benefit from the taxes? Mm. No. Will the banks still have that customer coming back to deposit money and then to borrow money? No. So as are we, we are thinking, and my advice to the women is join the circles. Mm. Circles work very well mm. for you. Mm. You have the opportunity, join those circles. Mm. Save as little as you can mm. because it's making you money and also make sure that you are buying the shares mm. that will also get for you the dividends mm. and then you're borrowing and contributing. Remember, if you borrow from a bank, mm. you're not a um, shareholder in that bank yeah. so you don't have any dividends at the end of the year from mm. it okay mm. you are making for them money but if you borrow from your own circle that you um participate in mm. now like are we we have chapters across the countries mm. we have arua we have ginger we have mbale we have uh fort Porto, we have mbarara we have kampala you know so all these groups have their leaders mm who are contributing to this big 
mother are we mm. and we are all pulling our resources together so mm. even the woman down in Mbale, down in uh, Jinja, down in Barara, down in Fort Porto, in Arua, Gulu, Lira, you know, Soroti, they all are able to access the loans. Wow. Yes. And okay. then it will build. And where are we going to see ourselves in the next five years? You guys are growing. I should join for my <laughs> VOP to the um, but... <laughs> That is, if you're allowed to cross anyway. <laughs> yeah, yes. You are. Uh, we are yeah. allowed, but I'm not into business. Um, oh, okay. I, I, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine. Where your passion is. Yes. Um, also, I would come to you, and as we wrap up, to, to give me access to financing and what you would want banks to speak the language of the women. Okay. Uh, it's the same thing I'll give to you in a wrap up. Yeah. What I can say is, as women, we have to save ourselves. Mm. Because when you look at it, uh, when you look at like maybe the Academy for Women Entrepreneurs, mm. you find most of us, you know, are startups, we mm. are trying to mm. uh, take the first steps and then you run to the bank. Mm. So I think uh, as women, we have to save ourselves. Let's build the culture of saving mm. and you borrow from what is yours, yeah. what belongs to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is a circle uh, where I work, we have a circle and, you know, they look at your savings mm. and then they, they give you the loan and then it is this 1%, mm. you know. Mm. So instead of running to the banks, of course, we can run to the banks when we have no option. Mm. If you're not saving, if, you're not, if you don't belong to any circle, mm. then you have no option. You have to go to the bank. Mm. But we have to save ourselves. We don't have to take ourselves in a ditch that we are actually seeing. Mm. Walk to that ditch when you're looking at it. So mm. if we can uh, look at what Academy for Women Entrepreneurs is doing, mm. and then as women, we build that culture, we save, mm. and uh, we borrow from what belongs to us. Mm. Where, you know, at the end of the year, you also have your portion. Because like the circle I'm talking about, at the end of the year, mm. if you've borrowed and you've paid back well, then mm. you also earn something from that. Yeah to keep encouraging them to save. Yes, so I think uh, we have to, it, it has to be within us really, okay. before we look at the bank. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you wrap up with how the banks can speak the language of the women or access to financing to the language of women in trade in the EFP. I will talk about awareness. Okay. Understand the woman, mm -hmm. where the woman is coming from mm. and where the woman wants to go. Mm. Most of the women in business do not own collateral. Yeah. Yet a bank requires collateral. collateral. And that is something that banks have failed to appreciate. Mm. And for banks to appreciate it, they must work together with other authorities. Mm. Like the government must push the agenda for the women, mm. for it to sink into the minds of the bank, mm. to be able to appreciate the woman, the far they are coming from and where they are going, mm. such that they are flexible in their demands but also as the women to be heard because there is someone who has made a statement, you don't have to be profitable to get financial access, mm. but you must show that you can scale. Our business is scaling. Someone is getting money from the bank. Is it going to scale your business? Or it's just for a problem or a challenge in that point in time without scaling your business. Mm. So while we want the bank to appreciate us, we need to appreciate ourselves and the objectives, the goals to which we are accessing these funds. And the ultimate one is to be to scale. Mm. Then there, the banks can come in, pushed by the government, because the truth is collateral fail to get loans on two occasions. Why? Collateral and the loan they want from, the collateral they want is land. Mm. Mm. Okay? But how many women in business own land? Mm. Actually, most of them are going into business to get out of that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Most women are in business to get out of that vulnerability because they don't have that support to which they were committed to receive. Mm. But while they get out of that state of vulnerability to contribute to socioeconomic development of the country, then they must appreciate the history of the woman mm. to address the present and advance into the future. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a wonderful conversation, learning and learning and relearning about the women 
and we always say that women are not a homogeneous group and today we had the academy the our academy by the u.s mission in uganda the alumni but also we want to remind the government in our wrap-up that guess what the ministry of uh, east african affairs should do a symposium in, in terms of for women in you know in trade within the east african community partnering with ura ursb and find the women where they are at because you know women have children so you're going to call her in this town hall meeting but she has a child why is she going to leave that child so i remind my friend right honorable rebecca kadaga that the women's needs are paramount and i know she'll work on that to go to the women at the borders go to all those borders and look for the women and address their issues create more awareness i know the president said that all things should be going through ubc and um create awareness around these opportunities for trade in particular for women in the esc region and especially in the local languages so that women can understand and know how to you know venture into this market if we are to ensure that we are product productive and producing at large scale i've been your host yatunga rebecca juna till next time bye bye <music>